Hey guys, Shorty from Backtrack Touring, how are we going? So I'm over in the shed, um, how are we doing some work on the Backtrack Camper today? So I'm wiring up putting power in. We'll put some little LED reading lights. I'm going to probably put a light up the top there. And a TV point in the, up the end there. We'll put an exterior light in here. For the fridge, I need power for the fridge slide. So I'm going to go in there. So I was going to go in a drive. Batteries in here. As you can see, I've got plenty. I don't know if you can see that. So as you can see, I've got a 125 amp hour lithium battery in a drive, about the best you can get, but they're $1,700, so they're not cheap. I've also got plenty of inner drive bits and pieces. There's a 40 amp AC charger, 40 amp DC DC charger. That's a 2600 watt inverter in a drive. We got plenty of others over here. Another DC DC charger, another 2000 watt inverter, 600 watt sine wave inverter, spare travel buddy oven. So, plenty of Enerdrive stuff. I do like Enerdrive. I love Enerdrive. It's great, great stuff. And if you need any help with it, you just got to ring them up and they'll help you with anything you need. But I've decided to try Renergy. In the battery here, the box here, is a 170 amp hour lithium Renergy battery. Now, they're quite cheap, 170 amp hour, this is $1,100. That's not a bad price for a 170 amp hour lithium battery. I ordered a, I ordered a cheap one off eBay, it was $699 for a 100 amp hour lithium battery. When it arrived, it was dead. There was absolutely no voltage to it whatsoever. I sent it back and got a refund. I've heard good things about Renergy. From what I've read, it's pretty good stuff. So I thought I'd try it out. As I said, $1,100 for this 170 amp hour battery. I tested it when it arrived, it's got 13.1 volts in it. So it's good to go. They also do a battery monitor. That was $99 off eBay. Compared to a Enerdrive E-Pro, which is around $380. I've got a 30 amp solar controller. It's not an MPPT one. It's just a PWM. But... It was like $50 or something. So I'll try that out. Renner Drive DC DC charger, or Renergy DC DC battery charger. I think that's a hundred and something dollars. And then I've got a Renergy 1000 watt inverter. It was about 120. So it's fairly cheap stuff. But let's see how it goes. Righto, so let's get these out, see what we've got. Comes with a handy nylon handle. Some spare uh, bolts, they must be a bit longer I'd say. See, yep, uh, a little bit longer. Probably won't need those. So, slightly narrower and slightly taller than your normal battery, a little bit longer. 
Hopefully that'll fit all right in there. Oh, well that sucks. Yeah, that sucks big time. <laughs> Didn't allow for that, did I? It's a tad tall, I want my... Um, uh, it's going to be a bit too... Slightly too big, but it looks... Bugger. Bugger, bugger, bugger. Hmm. I measured up for a normal battery. Damn it. <sighs> what else we got? Solar controller, 30 amp PWM, an adventurer, got a USB port there you can charge off, and it can either have it out or I believe it's, you can have a flash mount as well. Battery monitor, that's pretty self explanatory what that is. Oh, yes. It comes with a shunt, some wiring. There we go. And we have the DC DC charger. Let's have a look at that one. Uh, comes with some stickers, and are energy powered, obviously they're proud of their stuff. Crap. Reasonable size. What do you want? Pretty easy. These little red flick switches here will be for what battery it is, whether it's lithium, AGM, or wet. That'll be in the instructions. And the inverter. Ah. Come to the remote. That's handy. More stickers. Power cord, instruction manual, okay, nice big lug, it's a thousand water, two fans, Not bad at all. Got a generic plug in on it. Can be Australian or American. That's interesting. I'll have to see if something plugs in on it. Yeah, so there you go, Australian plug. Generic. Plug straight in.
220 volt, 50 hertz. Hmm. Huh. Also comes with the cables for the battery. Excellent. Not bad looking stuff either. Nice powder coat finish. Seems to be a fairly quality quality put together. Made in China of course. But then, Enerdry is made in China as well, so... right on. Let's get into it. So we're just crimping these cables together. So we can get our 12 volt system all wired up in the camper. A bit of a stickler for doing everything right. Biggest thing is if you're wiring up high power things like inverters, don't skimp on the size of the cable. It costs a fair bit of money for the cable. Some of the cable gets up to like 40 bucks a meter, but um, if you skimp on it, you might put too small a cable in, your system's just not going to work properly. And you'll end up having to redo it and it'll cost you more in the long run. So much, much easier to do it right the first time. So here we are doing the install. The uh, 170 amp hour Renergy battery was just a bit too tall for my, ba too tall for my battery uh, tray here. So I had to put another one in over here, drop it down a bit, some tie downs, got the 1000 watt inverter here, 40 amp DC DC charger there, we'll put the shunt down in here, another fuse box in here, that'll run the rear lights, and the main one going up to the front for the fridge and the front lights. I've just uh, Plugged it in at the moment. Got the lithium charger going. Pump it in 40 amps. So it shows about about 70% state of charge on the energy. So I figured I'd better give her a bit of a charge up. So we're getting there, slowly, takes time. So I'll show you what I've done so far. I've got the energy battery in, that's fully charged now, 170 amp hour, 1000 watt inverter's hooked up, nice thick cable in there for that, make sure you fuse everything. I'm just doing the DC DC charger at the moment. I've put the shunt in. I'll run my cable through to the fuse box. And then I've got a, just a 6mm automotive cable running from there to a fuse box up the front. That's just going to run the fridge and uh, a couple of LED lights. So it won't even be drawing 10 amps, I wouldn't think. I can put a few other things on there if I want. But We've got a good heavy wire coming in here. You can run 100 amps into these fuse boxes and a maximum of 30. So, 6 mil automotive for about the 2 meter run I've got is good for 30 amps. So, I'll put a 30 amp fuse in there for that. I've still got to put the solar in, stick some um, Anderson plugs on the outside. Had to redo the battery box. I originally had shelf up here for the battery box, 
But when I set it up, I put the 125 in a drive battery in, and it fit in fine. The Renogy one's a lot taller, and it sat up a little bit too high here. So I dropped it over the side, dropped it down. Works out all right. Put the charger in here, shunt bits and pieces. So, working well. I've got a cigarette lighter up here. This is for the exterior light. So I've got 12 volt here. That's, I'm gonna put a bracket on here for the TV and then another bracket on the inside. So if I wanna sit outside and watch TV, we can, or watch a movie. And also I can plug the um, hardcore warning lights in there if I want to as well. So yeah, looking good. When it comes to doing 12 volt, you get a lot of people that swear by soldering. I'm not into soldering myself unless you're doing a joining two bits of wire together. Solder makes a brittle joint, it's prone to cracking, especially on corrugations, things like that. If you crimp them properly, your lugs, you won't have any problem. Get a little bit of flex in them. They're not going to crack and break. You crimp them properly, make sure you put heat shrink over them. Heat shrink supports the joint in there. Well, this is a 6 B and S cable. Was twin core stripped it out. Funny thing is, if it's on its own like this, it has a higher amperage rating than if it's twin core. If it's twin together, it's a lesser amperage rating. So I'll tend to split it a bit. So I've got this going from the charger to the battery, and then from the charger to the front, I'll use 4 BNS, which is a bit thicker. It's a 40 amp DC DC charger, so needs thicker cabling. I did run 6 BNS from the, with the Land Cruiser running the uh, Enerdrive 30 amp DC DC charger. It ran fine with 6 BNS but now they're a 40 amp one and I've also got a 40 amp one for putting the caravan. I'll probably have to change the one on the Land Cruiser and pull the 6 BNS out and put 4 BNS through. Stiffen up a bit more, probably put a 75 amp Anderson plug on instead of the 50 amp as well. Cook on the induction cooker. Watch TV while we're cooking. 12 volt point up here, 240 here, run through the inverter, 1000 watt inverter in the back here. At the moment we're pulling 87 amps out of the battery, 
170 amp hour lithium battery. I've got a bit of solar going on at the moment. Not a lot, but 2.4 amps going in from the hardcore panels there. Two panels in the sun anyway, so. so I wired 240 volt in here, runs through a 1000 watt inverter, turns it on here, the solar input there, another one here. We'll cook the crocodile burgers at the moment. Doing a thousand watt. Doing a thousand watt. Doing a thousand watt inverter. I'm getting back to cook the phone. Let's see if it's okay. 170 amp hour battery. Now the 151 amp hours. Drawing 87 amp hours out at the moment. Got a lot of lithium. What a lovely outlook. <laughs> Get out of the lake. Cooking crocodile burgers. All off the battery and solar. Still pumping in four amps. Twenty past six in the evening. <laughs> 